Hi everyone! Today I'm unboxing a watercolor kit by Home Hobby by 3L and making a colorful abstract animal painting. I got an email from 123creative.com saying that they'd like to send me one of their new watercolor kits to review, so they sent me this kit for free, but the video is not sponsored. And they also want to send art kits to two of you, so stay tuned for the giveaway later in the video. They have multiple watercolor kits and reading through the product info, I noticed that they all have the same supplies and the difference is in the instructions included in the kits. So the basic kit has just the supplies and the others have different step-by-step -step instructions based on your level and the price is based on how many instructions are included. The one that spoke to me the most was the ostrich, so I chose that one and it's an advanced watercolor kit. The division of the kits to beginner, intermediate and advanced seems to be based on the difficulty level of the step-by-step -step guides and not on a difference in the quality of the paints. The kit includes guides, a paint mixing tray, a brush set, 12 watercolor paint tubes, a set of 12 watercolor pencils and a set of 12 watercolor pastels, as well as a pencil sharpener and a watercolor paper pad. By the way, if it looks like I'm tapping onto art supplies in the video, it's because I also filmed an ASMR version of the unboxing and color swatching at the same time. And that video will be up soon too. The brush set includes five different sizes, the big brushes are quite nice, the big flat one is good for a background wash. I do like to use a small brush for details and the smallest one they included was size 4, but if it holds its shape well, it's fine for details too. I'm actually trying out two watercolor paints for the first time. I've only used pan watercolors before. They say not to let the paint dry in the mixing well, but I'm not sure why. They also sell acrylic paints, so could this part of the instructions be directed for the acrylics rather than watercolor. The pastels unfortunately arrived a bit broken and dirty, but I think I'll try cleaning them in rice later and hopefully they'll be fine after that. Overall, I'd say all of the plastic packaging was quite dusty, but the products themselves, other than the pastels, were clean. The sharpener has two holes, a bigger and a smaller one, which I like, although I don't think there's anything in this kit that requires the bigger hole, but it's still useful to have for other supplies. There's a color wheel included in this kit that tells you exactly which colors you need to mix from the two watercolors in this kit to get the results you want, which I think is a helpful addition but of course you could also paint the same color wheel on your own and refer to that too. The watercolor pad has 10 sheets of acid-free cold press 300 CSM watercolor paper, which I think is quite a good thickness. There's a bit of texture, but not too much. I tested out the watercolor pencils, pastels and paints so you can see how they look compared to each other and how well the pencils and pastels blend or dissolve with water. The colors are almost the same in each set, so you can sketch and paint over it with a matching color if you want. Pastels are a little bit more opaque than the watercolor pencils, and how well they dissolve differs a bit from color to color. With the watercolor paints I was actually surprised at how opaque they were. As I said, I've only used pan watercolors before, and I think this level of opaqueness would be hard to achieve in one layer with the band watercolors I have. I did use very little water for these swatches though, and added more water for the actual painting. Besides the step-by-step -step guides, they also give you little tips, like if the paper buckles, you can re-wet it from the backside and let it dry flat. I've heard that tip before, but I haven't tried it yet. I do like that they include tips like this, that can be very useful, especially for beginners. The instructions said to stretch the paper beforehand to prevent the paper from warping or buckling when it dries, 
and that they have tips on stretching the paper on their website. They do in fact have helpful instructions in their blog and on their YouTube channel. And I link to both of those in the description. They suggest stretching the paper by taping down the paper on a hard surface with masking tape and then wetting it with a large brush and letting it dry before painting. So I tried that with this painting. I think it's best if you can stretch it wet and tape it down with gummed paper tape. But since it's not included in the kit and I don't have gummed paper tape yet, we'll go with the technique they suggested. Since the ostrich was what caught my eye in the first place, I'll try following the step-by-step -step guide for that. The instructions include a few images of different phases of the painting and a bigger image at the end. This kit included one advanced project which was the ostrich and two intermediate ones. The giraffe came with an outline sketch so you could even trace it if you'd like and then follow the instructions. I also watched the YouTube video for this painting for some more guidance. So you can find the same information that's on the printed instructions in their blog and videos. But having the printed instructions and the big image of the finished painting physically at hand can be useful too. It's cheaper to get just the supplies without the physical instructions though. And you can even get any of the supplies separately in their online store if you don't want the whole kit. I found this bird painting interesting because it's kind of realistic but with abstract colors. I like these types of paintings but I've never made one myself so I thought why not try it now. Also, I didn't swatch the white pencil, pastel and paint earlier, but I did use the white paint in this painting and it was surprisingly opaque, like the other paints too. I'd usually use an acrylic paint to add white details over a watercolor painting, but I didn't have to do that here. As for the stretching method, the paper did buckle a bit once it dried, but I did paint quite a few layers so if you're painting something more simple, it might be okay. If you'd like to enter the giveaway to win any kit you'd like from the 123 Creative website, check the rules in the description of this video or in the comment section. Besides watercolor, they also have kits for sketching and acrylic painting if you prefer those. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week. Bye!